And now chapter 5 of the Madhya Leela, the activities of Sakshi Gopal. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who appeared as Sakshi Gopal to benefit a Brahmin. For one hundred days Sakshi Gopal traveled to the country, walking on his own legs. Thus his activities are wonderful. All glories to Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. All glories to Lord Nityananda Prabhu. All glories to Sri Advaita Prabhu and all glories to the devotees of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Walking and walking, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his party finally arrived at Yajapur on the river Vaitarani. There he saw the temple of Varaha Dev and offered his obeisances unto him. In the temple of Varaha Dev, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu engaged in chanting and dancing and offering prayers. He passed that night in the temple. Afterwards, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the town of Katak to see the temple of the witness Gopal. When he saw the deity of Gopal, he was very much pleased with his beauty. While there, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu engaged in chanting and dancing for some time, and being overwhelmed, he offered many prayers to Gopal. That night, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu stayed in the temple of Gopal, and along with all the devotees, he heard the narration of the witness Gopal with great pleasure. Previously, when Nityananda Prabhu had toured all over India to see different places of pilgrimage, he also had come to see Sakshi Gopal at Katak. At that time, Nityananda Prabhu had heard the story of Sakshi Gopal from the townspeople. He now recited this again, and Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the narration with great pleasure. Formerly, at Vidyanagara in South India, there were two Brahmins who made a long tour to see different places of pilgrimage. First of all, they visited Gaya, then Kashi, then Prayag. Finally, with great pleasure, they came to Mathura. After reaching Mathura, they started visiting the different forests of Vrindavan and came to Govardhan Hill. They visited all twelve forests and at last came to the town of Vrindavan. In the village of Panchakroshi, Vrindavan, at the site where the Govinda temple is now situated, there was a great temple where gorgeous worship of Gopal was performed. After taking baths at different bathing places along the river Yamuna, such as Keshi Ghat and Kaliya Ghat, the pilgrims visited the temple of Gopal. Afterwards, they took rest in that temple. The beauty of the Gopal deities stole away their minds, and feeling great happiness, they remained there for two or four days. One of the two Brahmins was an old man, and the other was young. The young man was assisting the old one. Indeed, the young Brahmin always rendered service to the older one, and the old man, being very satisfied with his service, was pleased with him. The older man told the younger, you have rendered various types of service to me. You have assisted me in traveling to all these places of pilgrimage. Even my own son does not render such service. By your mercy, I did not become fatigued while on this tour. If I do not show you any respect, 
I will be ungrateful. Therefore, I promise to give you my daughter in charity. The younger Brahmin replied, My dear sir, please hear me. You are saying something very unusual. Such a thing never happens. You are a most aristocratic family man, well educated and very rich. I am not at all aristocratic, and I am without a decent education and have no wealth. Sir, I am not a suitable bridegroom for your daughter. I render service to you only for the satisfaction of Krishna. Lord Krishna is very pleased by service rendered to Brahmins, and when the Lord is pleased, the opulence of one's devotional service increases. The older Brahmin replied, My dear boy, do not doubt me. I will give you my daughter in charity. I have already decided this. The young Brahmin said, You have a wife and sons, and you have a large circle of relatives and friends. Without the consent of all your friends and relatives, it is not possible to give me your daughter in charity. Just consider the story of Queen Rukmini and her father Bhishmak. King Bhishmak wanted to give his daughter Rukmini in charity to Krishna, but Rukmi, his eldest son, objected. Therefore he could not carry out his decision. The elderly Brahmin said, My daughter is my own property. If I choose to give my property to someone, who has the power to stop me? My dear boy, I will give my daughter to you in charity, and I will neglect the position of all others. Do not doubt me in this regard. Just accept my proposal. So the younger Brahmin replied, If you have decided to give your young daughter to me, then say so before the Gopal deity. Coming before Gopal, the elderly Brahmin said, My dear Lord, please witness that I have given my daughter to this boy. Then the younger Brahmin addressed the deity, saying, My dear Lord, you are my witness. I shall call for you to testify if it is necessary later on. After these talks, the two Brahmins started for home. As usual, the young Brahmin accompanied the elderly Brahmin as if the older Brahmin were a guru or spiritual master and rendered him service in various ways. After returning to Vidyanagara, each Brahmin went to his respective home. After some time, the elderly Brahmin became very anxious. He began to think, I have given my word to a Brahmin in a holy place and what I promised will certainly come to pass. I must now disclose this to my wife, sons, other relatives, and friends. Thus one day, the elderly Brahmin called for a meeting of all his relatives and friends, and before them all, he narrated what had taken place in front of Gopal. When those who belonged to the family circle heard the narration of the old Brahmin, they made exclamations showing their disappointment. They all requested that he not make such a proposal again. They unanimously agreed, and one said, If you offer your daughter to a degraded family, your aristocracy will be lost. When people hear of this, they will make jokes and laugh at you. The elderly Brahmin said, how can I undo the promise I made in a holy place while on a pilgrimage? Whatever may happen, I must give him my daughter in charity. The relative replied, If you give your daughter to that boy, we shall give up all connection with you. Indeed, his wife and sons declared, If such a thing happens, we shall take poison and die. The elderly Brahmin said, if I do not give my daughter to the young Brahmin, he will call Sri Gopalji as a witness. Thus he will take my daughter by force, and in that case, my religious principles will become meaningless. His son replied, The deity may be a witness, but he is in a distant country. <laughs> so how can he come to bear witness against you? Why are you so anxious over this? 
You do not have to flatly deny that you spoke such a thing. There is no need to make a false statement. Simply say that you do not remember what you said. If you simply say, I do not remember, <laughs> I shall take care of the rest. By argument, I shall defeat the young Brahmin. Hearing this, the mind of the elderly Brahmin became very agitated. Feeling helpless, he simply turned his attention to the lotus feet of Gopal. The elderly Brahmin prayed, My dear Lord Gopal, I have taken shelter of your lotus feet, and therefore I request you to please protect my religious principles from disturbance, and at the same time save my kinsmen from dying. <laughs> The next day, the elderly Brahmin was thinking deeply about this matter when the young Brahmin came to his house. The young Brahmin came to him and offered respectful obeisances. Then, very humbly, folding his hands, he spoke as follows. You have promised to give your daughter in charity to me. Now you do not say anything. What is your conclusion? After the young Brahmin submitted this statement, the elderly Brahmin remained silent. Taking this opportunity, his son immediately came out with a stick to strike the younger man. Oh, you are most degraded. You want to marry my sister, just like a dwarf who wants to catch the moon. Seeing a stick in the hand of the son, the younger Brahmin fled. The next day, however, he gathered together all the people of the village. All the people of the village then called for the elderly Brahmin and brought him to their meeting place. The young Brahmin then began to speak before them as follows. This gentleman has promised to hand over his daughter to me, yet now he does not follow his promise. Please ask him about his behavior. So one of them said, If you have already promised to give him your daughter in charity, why are you not fulfilling your promise? You have given your word of honor. The elderly Brahmin said, My dear friends, please hear what I have to submit. I do not exactly remember making a promise like that. When the elderly Brahmin's son heard this, he took the opportunity to juggle some words. Becoming very impudent, he stood before the assembly and spoke as follows. While touring various holy places of pilgrimage, my father carried much money. Seeing the money, this rogue decided to take it away. There was no one besides this man with my father. Giving him an intoxicant known as Dutara to eat, this rogue made my father mad, yes mad. Having taken all my father's money, this rogue claimed that it was taken by some thief. Now he is claiming that my father has promised to give him his daughter in charity. All of you assembled here are gentlemen. Please judge whether it is befitting to offer this poor Brahmin my father's daughter. Hearing all these statements, all the people gathered there became a little doubtful. They thought that it was quite possible that because of attraction for riches, one might give up his religious principles. At that time, the young Brahmin said, My dear gentlemen, please hear. Just to gain victory in an argument, this man is lying. How can anything like this happen? Being very satisfied with my service, this Brahmin said to me of his own accord, I promise to hand over my daughter to you. At that time, I forbade him to do this, telling him, O oh, best of the Brahmins, I am not a fit husband for your daughter. Whereas you are a learned scholar, a rich man, belonging to an aristocratic family, I, I am a poor man, uneducated, and with no claim to aristocracy. Still, this Brahmin insisted. Again and again he asked me to accept his proposal, saying, I have given you my daughter, please accept her. 
I then said, please hear, you are a learned Brahmin. Your wife and friends and relatives will never agree to this proposal. My dear sir, you will not be able to fulfill your promise. Your promise will be broken. Yet again and again the Brahmin emphasized his promise saying, I have offered you my daughter, do not hesitate, she is my daughter and I shall give her to you. Who can forbid me? At that time, I concentrated my mind and requested the Brahmin to make the promise before the Gopal deity. Then this gentleman said in front of the Gopal deity, My dear Lord, please bear witness. I have offered my daughter to this Brahmin in charity. Accepting the Gopal deity as my witness, I then submitted the following at his lotus feet. If this Brahmin later hesitates to give me his daughter, my dear Lord, I shall call on you as a witness. Please note this with care and attention. Thus I have called upon a great personality in this transaction. I have asked the Supreme Godhead to be my witness. The entire world accepts the word of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Taking this opportunity, the elderly Brahmin immediately confirmed that this was really true. He said, If Gopal personally comes here to serve as a witness, I shall surely give my daughter to the young Brahmin. The elderly Brahmin's son immediately confirmed this, saying, <laughs> Yes, this is a very nice settlement. The elderly Brahmin thought, Since Lord Krishna is very merciful, he will certainly come to prove my statement. But the atheistic son thought, It is not possible for Gopal to come and bear witness. Thinking thus, both father and son agreed. The young Brahmin took this opportunity to speak. Please write this down on paper in black and white so that you may not again change your word of honor. All the assembled people got this statement down in black and white and taking the signatures of agreement from both of them served as the mediators. What's going on? What's this all about? The young Brahmin then said, Will all you gentlemen present please hear me? This elderly Brahmin is certainly truthful and is following religious principles. He had no desire to break his promise, but fearing that his kinsmen would commit suicide, he deviated from the truth. By the piety of the elderly Brahmin, I shall call the Supreme Personality of Godhead as a witness. Thus I shall keep his truthful promise intact. Hearing the emphatic statement of the younger Brahmin, some atheists in the meeting began to cut jokes. However, someone else said, After all, the Lord is merciful, and if he likes, he can come. After the meeting, the young Brahmin started for Vrindavan. Upon arriving there, he first offered his respectful obeisances to the deity, and then narrated everything in full detail. My Lord, you are the protector of Brahminical culture, and you are also very merciful. Therefore, kindly show your great mercy by protecting the religious principles of us two Brahmins. My dear Lord, I, I am not thinking to become happy by getting the daughter as a bride. I, I am simply thinking that the Brahmin has broken his promise, and that, and that is giving me great pain. My dear sir, you are very merciful and you know everything. Therefore, kindly be a witness in this case. A person who knows things as they are and still does not bear witness becomes involved in sinful activities. Lord Krishna replied, My dear Brahman, go back to your home and call a meeting of all the men. In that meeting, just try to remember me. I shall certainly appear there and at that time I shall protect the honor of both you Brahmins by bearing witness to the promise. The young Brahmin replied, My dear sir, even if you appear there as a four-handed Vishnu deity, still 
none of those people will believe in your words. Only if you go there in this form of Gopal and speak the words from your beautiful face will your testimony be heard by all the people. Lord Krishna said, <laughs> I've never heard of a deity's walking from one place to another. That is true, but how is it that you are speaking to me, although you are a deity? My dear Lord, you are not a statue. You are directly the son of Maharaj Nanda. Now, for the sake of an old Brahmin, you can do something you have never done before. Sri Gopalji then smiled and said, <laughs> My dear Brahmin, just listen to me. I shall walk behind you, and in this way I shall go with you. Do not try to see me by turning around, for as soon as you see me, I shall remain stationary in that very place. You will know that I am walking behind you by the sound of my ankle bells. Cook one kilo of rice daily and offer it. I shall eat that rice and follow behind you. The next day the Brahmin begged permission from Gopal and started for his country. Gopal followed him step by step. While Gopal followed the young Brahmin, the tinkling sound of his ankle bells could be heard. The Brahmin became very pleased and he cooked first class rice for Gopal to eat. The young Brahmin walked and walked in this way until he eventually arrived in his own country. When he neared his own village, he began to think as follows. I have now come to my village and I shall go to my home and tell all the people that the witness has arrived. The Brahmin then began to think that if the people didn't directly see the Gopal deity, they would not believe that he had arrived. But even if Gopal stays here, there is still nothing to fear. Thinking this, the Brahmin turned to look back, and he saw that Gopal, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, was standing there smiling. The Lord told the Brahmin, Now you can go home. I shall stay here and shall not leave. The young Brahmin then went to the town and informed all the people about Gopal's arrival. Hearing this, the people were struck with wonder. All the townspeople went to see the witness Gopal, and when they saw the Lord actually standing there, they all offered their respectful obeisances. When the people arrived, they were very pleased to see the beauty of Gopal, and when they heard that he had actually walked there, they were all surprised. Then the elderly Brahmin, being very pleased, came forward and immediately fell like a stick in front of Gopal. Thus, in the presence of all the townspeople, Lord Gopal bore witness that the elderly Brahmin had offered his daughter in charity to the young Brahmin. After the marriage ceremony was performed, the Lord informed both Brahmins, You two Brahmins are my eternal servants, birth after birth. I have become very pleased by the truthfulness of you both. Now you can ask for a benediction. Thus with great pleasure the two Brahmins begged for a benediction. The elderly Brahmin said, Please remain here so that people all over the world will know how merciful you are to your servants. Lord Gopal stayed, and the two Brahmins engaged in his service. After hearing of the incident, many people from different countries began to come to see Gopal. Eventually, the king of that country heard of this wonderful story, and he also came to see Gopal, and thus became very satisfied. The king constructed a nice temple, and regular service was executed. Gopal became very famous under the name of Shakshi Gopal, the Witness Gopal. 
Thus, Sakshi Gopal stayed in Vidyanagara and accepted service for a very long time. Later, there was a fight, and this country was conquered by King Purushottam of Orissa. The king was victorious over the king of Vidyanagara, and he took possession of his throne, the Manikya Singhasan, which was bedecked with many jewels. That king became known as Purushottam Dev. He was a great devotee and was advanced in the civilization of the Aryans. He begged at the lotus feet of Gopal. Please come to my kingdom. When the king begged him to come to his kingdom, Gopal, who was already obliged for his devotional service, accepted his prayer. Thus the king took the Gopal deity and went back to Katak. After winning the Manikya throne, King Purushottam took it to Jagannath Puri and presented it to Lord Jagannath. In the meantime, he also established regular worship of the Gopal deity at Katak. When the Gopal deity was installed at Katak, the queen of Purushottam Dev went to see him and with great devotion presented various kinds of ornaments. The queen had a very valuable pearl which she wore on her nose and she wished to give it to Gopal. She then began to think as follows. If there were a hole in the deity's nose, I could transfer the pearl to him. Considering this, the queen offered her obeisances to Gopal and returned to her palace. That night she dreamed that Gopal appeared and began to speak to her as follows. During my childhood, my mother made a hole in my nose and with great endeavor set a pearl there. That very hole is still there and you can use it to set the pearl you desire to give me. After dreaming this, the queen explained it to her husband, the king. Both the king and the queen then went to the temple with the pearl. Seeing the hole in the nose of the deity, they set the pearl there and being very pleased, held a great festival. Since then, Gopal has been situated in the city of Katak and he has been known ever since as Sakshi Gopal. Thus Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard the narration of Gopal's activities. Both he and his personal devotees became very pleased. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was sitting before the Gopal deity, all the devotees saw him and the deity as being of the same form. Both of them were of the same complexion and both had the same gigantic bodies. Both wore saffron cloth and both were very grave. The devotees saw that both Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Gopal were brilliantly effulgent and had eyes like lotuses. They were both absorbed in ecstasy, and their faces resembled full moons. When Nityananda saw both the Gopal deity and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in that way, he began to exchange remarks with the devotees, all of whom were smiling. Thus with great pleasure, Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu passed that night in the temple. After seeing the Mangal Arti ceremony in the morning, he started on his journey. In his book Chaitanya Bhagavat, Srila Vrindavan Das Thakur has very vividly described the places visited by the Lord on the way to Bhuvaneshwar. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived at Kamalapur, he took his bath in the Bhaginati River and left his sannyas staff in the hands of Lord Nityananda. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to the temple of Lord Shiva, known as Kapotishvar, Nityananda Prabhu, 
who was keeping his sannyas staff in custody, broke the staff in three parts and threw it into the river Baginadi. Later, this river became known as Dandabanga Nadi. After seeing the temple of Jagannath from a distant place, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately became ecstatic. After offering obeisances to the temple, he began to dance in the ecstasy of love of God. All the devotees became ecstatic in the association of Lord Chaitanya, and thus absorbed in love of God, they were dancing and singing while going along the main road. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu laughed, cried, danced, and made many ecstatic vibrations and sounds. Although the temple was only six miles away, to him the distance seemed thousands of miles. Thus walking and walking, the Lord eventually arrived at the place known as Ataranala. Arriving there, he expressed his external consciousness, speaking to Sri Nityananda Prabhu. When Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had thus regained external consciousness, he asked Lord Nityananda Prabhu, Please return my staff. Nityananda Prabhu then replied, It has been broken into three parts. When you fell down in ecstasy, I, I caught you, but both of us together fell upon the staff. Thus the staff broke under our weight. Where the pieces have gone, I, I cannot say. It is certainly because of my offense that your staff has broken. Now you can punish me on this account as you think proper. After hearing the story about how his staff had been broken, the Lord expressed a little sadness and displaying a bit of anger began to speak as follows. You have all benefited me by bringing me to Nilachal. However, my only possession was that one staff, and you have not kept it. So all of you should go before or behind me to see Lord Jagannath. I shall not go with you. Mukunda Dat told Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, My Lord, you should go ahead and allow all the others to follow. We shall not go with you. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then began to walk very swiftly before all the other devotees. No one could understand the real purpose of both the lords, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Nityananda Prabhu. The devotees could not understand why Nityananda Prabhu broke the staff, why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu permitted him to do so, nor why, after permitting him, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu became angry. The pastime of the breaking of the staff is very deep. Only one whose devotion is fixed upon the lotus feet of the two lords can understand it. The glories of Lord Gopal, who is merciful to Brahmins, are very great. The narration of Sakshi Gopal was spoken by Nityananda Prabhu and heard by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. One who hears this narration of Lord Gopal with faith and love very soon attains the lotus feet of Lord Gopal. Praying at the lotus feet of Sri Rupa and Sri Raghunath, always desiring their mercy, I, Krishna Das, narrate Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita following in their footsteps. This ends Chapter 5 of the Madhya Leela, The Activities of Sakshi Gopal.